بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم موسى عليه الصلاة والسلام that happened and someone came to him and told him you know what they're looking for you and now they want to you know perhaps harm you so he went away he went away and guess what he found according to some of the narrations a man a noble man some narrations say it was the prophet Shuaib may peace be upon him and the narrations say that this man was so impressed because of the honesty of Musa alayhi salam. I want to spend a few moments on this because there are lessons for us to learn. Lessons for us to learn from this story. It is reported that when he arrived in Madian, he saw people, all these people were actually, uh, they had their flock of sheep and whatever livestock they had, and they were helping it. They were helping the livestock to uh, drink from the well. And there were two women sitting at a bit of a distance. And Musa alayhi salam got up to them respectfully and he spoke to them, what's wrong with you? Why are you not going? Everyone's going. You're not going to feed your, your sheep or your, your livestock. And they said, That means we will not go to quench the thirst of these, this livestock until the rest of the men move away. Imagine, look at the qualities they have. They're waiting. They know we are women. These are men. You know, we need to, we don't want to actually expose ourselves there. We don't want to make an embarrassment of ourselves there. We'll wait for them to go and then we will come. And our father is an elderly man. Why did they have to say that? Some of the Mufassirin say the reason is the first question that comes to the mind of the individual is, why are you doing this? There's supposed to be a, a man doing this. So immediately they said, you know what? We know that there's supposed to be a man doing it, but our father is old, so we're doing it on his behalf. It was not wrong. But they showed that there was a need for it. Like what we say, if a woman wants to work, for example, it's not wrong on condition that the environment is good. It's conducive on condition that she knows where to carry, how to carry herself and where to be at what time and so on. If there's a need, there's a need. But where there's no need at all, not at all, nothing. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to do the right thing. My brothers and sisters, something we learn beautiful from the story of Mo the Prophet Moses, may peace be upon him, is he helped them and in no time he was a strong man. The, the flock was on its way back home. The father inquires, what happened? They said, wow, there was a man and they described him and this is what he did. He says, go and call him. They went, Allah says, فَجَاءَتْهُ إِحْدَاهُمَا تَمْشِي عَلَى اسْتِحْيَاءِ قَالَتْ إِنَّ أَبِي يَدْعُوكَ لِيَجْزِيَكَ أَجْرَ مَا سَقَيْتَ لَنَا One of them came walking very modestly, very modestly. She walked to him and she said, you know, our father is calling you in order to reward you for what you did for us. Wow. Subhanallah, the man decided to go. Some of the narrations say, they say that when Musa alayhi salatu was salam was walking, he decided, you know what? I don't want to walk behind these women. They're going to lead the way. Let me walk in front of them so that they can at least tell me, you know, we're going to the left or to the right and I will carry on. I'm the man and I, I want to lower my gaze, control myself. That was so loved. Subhanallah. It's an act of honesty. It shows dignity. It shows respect. I don't want to abuse. You know, people today, they see a woman and they see her behind. Astaghfirullah. What do they do? Bearded guys. <laughs> Pretend like they're not looking when someone sees them. Astaghfirullah. Watch out. Watch out. Watch out. Lower your gaze. It brings about nothing but loss of contentment. Loss of contentment. That's not yours. It will never be yours. Yes, it was probably their duty to cover as well from a perspective, from a godly perspective. But if they didn't, you need to do the honorable thing. You need to be respectful. Anyway, this quality was loved by the father as well. You know what he says? He tells the man, look, straight talk. I don't know you or I know you from a different tribe. I know you from a different place altogether. I'm saying this for a reason. Different tribe different place altogether. But 
I offer you one of my daughters. Wow. Subhanallah. What did the father see? The father saw that this man here is honest and he's hard working. He might not have anything right now, but he's a good man. He's responsible. He is going to take care of this particular daughter of mine. I don't want to lose the opportunity. I've got two daughters. Let me get one of them married. Subhanallah. How many of us think that way? A man comes begging for your daughter and you ask him, what do you have? What do you, what do you mean? What do I have? I've got two hands. I've got eyes. I've got no, I mean money, cash. What car do you drive? What job do you have? What's your salary? What's this? What's that? He will, you will tick off the whole list, but he doesn't have Iman. He doesn't have responsibility. He doesn't have good character and conduct. No matter what else he has, your daughter will suffer in that home. But if you have married your daughter off to an honorable person who's responsible, he has character and conduct and he has a, a relationship with his maker. Even if he doesn't have all the glamorous things on earth, he's going to look after her like a queen. He's going to look after her better than you can look after the mother of the same child. One day the mother of that same daughter will come back to you and say, I wish you could look after me the way my son-in-law looks after my daughter. I think they would be too scared to say that actually, especially in the Philippines. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant you goodness. Look at the lesson. Why does Allah have to make mention of marriage in the middle of the story of Musa alayhi salatu was salam? Because it's important for us to learn a lesson. Don't just read it and carry on. Read it and learn the lesson and apply it as best as you can under the circumstances you live in. Do the honorable. So he says, okay, you work for me for a certain number of years, eight years and so on, or 10 years. And what you do is I give you my daughter and then you can proceed. You can go away. That shows us something else. I think in some cultures they say it is an insult for the son-in-law to come and live with his father-in-law. There is a word that they use for it, right? There is a word they use insult. Wallahi, this is the messenger of Allah higher than you and me. One of Ulul Azmi min al Rusul, one of the determined messengers, those with determination. They were a specific five top of the notch, highest of the messengers. Musa alayhi salam, one of them. Guess what? <laughs> he worked for his father-in-law. He worked for his father-in-law at a certain stage that goes to show that sometimes what we believe is actually backward. There's nothing wrong. You're a happy man. I'm a happy man. Work for my father-in-law. So what? I have nothing to lose. Alhamdulillah. Few years he worked and after that he went. Allah gave him prophethood. 